And uh, as you've seen from, from the other talks here today, uh, Java RTS leverages Solaris built-in real-time facilities to do that. And for more information, uh, you do have this in your books. These are some links to uh, the real-time specification, some articles on real-time, and, uh, and the actual uh, java.sun.com page for real-time technology. Any questions? I think we have time for questions, right? Okay, plenty of time. Yes. Right now, I'm working with uh, several banks and it also exchanges uh, to do some evaluations on Java real time. And the type of problems they're trying to solve range from an equity system that, that mirrors this. And you know, I built this system with two other system engineers I work with before we visited any customers. Um, and this echoes a lot of the problems that they're trying to solve. So for equities trading system where they have to deal with events coming in and having to respond to those events within a bounded amount of time. So they have deadlines before they have to execute something on that. Um, also, market data feed applications. You saw in this demo also, I didn't really highlight it as much. There's a data feed application that's written in real time because when, the, when they take this data and they've got to feed it to other applications, well, that too has to make sure those updates get out with, it, with a maximum amount of latency. Um, and it, it varies from equities to fixed income um, specialized algorithms that have to be processed within a certain bounded latency. Yes? Based upon your example, I get the impression that you have a 10 millisecond real time response window. No, it's one millisecond. Okay. And that's really just due to the fact that this is, this is a single core, single processor laptop. And I was doing, and I had one of the other excuses I had written down here was that I implemented a no no, I have two real time VMs running. That's a bit much for one core. Yes? Um, how are you keeping track of the knowledge collection activity from your code? Uh, actually, the VM, like the standard Java VM today, has uh, JMX monitoring hooks in it, as well as dtrace hooks. But in this case, we're using the, the JMX monitoring hooks that output uh, statistics on real-time garbage collection, on garbage collection in general, as well as everything else that's that the Java 1.5 uh, VM outputs and mon that's monitoring APIs, the MBeans. Yes? If you took the code that you need to write to, to use in all the memory and write it you know, without no need for it or anything like that, would you still get sort of 80% of, 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 of your goodness? Actually, I have that. How much time do we have, Dave? Do I have time? Okay, I can run it if you'd like. I have a real time implementation as well in addition to the non-real-time and the no-heap real-time, which simply takes the threads, the two threads in the system, and makes them real-time threads. We can I can run that if you'd like to see, and it generally makes its deadlines as well. Let's do that. All right, so I'm going to change directory to a real-time trading system directory. You can see it there. I'm going to run the GUI. I'm going to run the trading engine. I'm going to get ready to run the data feed application once this starts up. OK. Let me just check my list of excuses you now. Okay. Let's see how this does. This is without that any scoped or immortal memory. This is regular heat memory, but using the real-time garbage collector. And you can see the trades executed where they were supposed to. Um, one bad thing happened. I missed a limit cell. What kind of response do you get with the easier Is that like 10 milliseconds? Well, this, again, is a one millisecond control loop. Yes, uh, I know. Well, all my, my trades did occur where they were supposed to. I just had one little hiccup here. Um, what that probably meant is I missed one deadline. This is, you know, with, with the, no, the real-time implementation, it's more of a soft real-time uh, implementation. Probably missed a deadline. I missed one market tick. 
probably a two millisecond mess there. Okay. That's probably more impl a demo implementation thing than, than a real time thing. Um, you could see, let's take a look at the performance graph. Just, okay. If I can bring it up, uh, looks like my GUI might have, uh, might have hung. Okay. You can see what happened here. Um, still have a max. You notice that this, this timing is a lot different than what you saw in the previous one. The other one was much steadier. This had some, some ups and downs in it. Um, still, the highest blips were on the order of a million nanoseconds, a little bit higher, and that probably accounts for one of the missed trades. And uh, to prove to you that garbage collection did occur, it still did occur, um, but it did not interrupt my high priority real time threads. That's the difference. So, yes, you can achieve probably what you need to achieve with just real time threads. You don't have to always get to the no heap real time thread. Um, level. This is a pretty demanding system. I'm forcing garbage collections to occur. I have a very limited amount of memory available um, in both the non-real-time and real-time implementations. Any other questions? Another question? I think I was trying to ask a slightly different question. Oh, and I went through the whole thing. <laughs> Okay, well let's explain this a little bit more. When you're, like I said before, when you're writing a real-time application with Java real-time, you're meant to be able to just use Java as it is. It does require a little bit more planning ahead to, to understand and to plan where your objects are going to live. Um, and that's reasonable, I think. In a lot of cases, you don't have to use immortal memory for everything. You don't want to use immortal memory for everything. In this case, I used it for uh, a hash map where I was replacing Va double values. It was not creating new objects every time. I was just replacing a value of a stock. Um, if you were going to be creating a lot of objects, especially if they were immutable objects, you would not do that in immortal memory. Um, if you have in your time critical loop a transaction process, a transaction envelope you're going to be processing, you can do something like create a scoped memory region, which is actually represented by a Java object. You create, you create it, you do it. Um, you create it with a particular size, um, and you control when your threads, your real-time threads, enter that scope memory region and when they exit. And while you're in that scope memory region, let's say you enter it as you're beginning your transaction envelope, any objects you create will be created in that scope memory region. When you exit that scope memory region, which you control in your code, let's say it's at the end of your transaction envelope, um, all the, uh, that entire scope memory region will just go away in one operation. All the objects in there will go away in one operation. They will not be garbage collected. It's like doing a delete in C++. It's just one operation, a mem free, whatever it might be. Um, so you have to think about it, say, well, I, ha I have these objects that I'm going to create certain periods of time in my time critical loop. Don't want to do that in immortal memory because they're never going to go away. I'll run out of immortal memory. I'll create a scope memory region instead. Good on time, or any more questions? That's it. Thank you.